What is going on guys? My name is Forge here on this channel, Mr. Supply Drops. Today I wanted to talk about something that was outside of Call of Duty or Rainbow Six Siege or any game in particular. I wanted to look at the PS5 Pro specifically because the PS5 Pro is not worth $700. That's just the main opinion with this entire video, okay? And this is coming from someone. I want this to be very, very clear. I wanted to see a PS5 Pro two, three years ago. I was actually at this point i was just going to wait and because i don't have a ps5 yet i don't have an xbox series x i'm a pc gamer primarily but i thought because i had the ps4 pro i'll just wait until the ps5 pro comes out and then i'll just get that instead and uh, i was going to do that I, even if it was about a hundred dollars less six hundred dollars i could have probably swallowed my pride a bit and bought it for 600 as long as it also had a disk drive you know that's another thing we'll get into but when it comes down to it seven hundred dollars for a console something Something that can only play video games and maybe watch Netflix or be used as a Blu-ray player if you wanted to do that in 2024. It can only do things like that for $700 is absolutely absurd, all right? And I'm going to get into some more reasons, not just that, but I do want to make it also very clear. Why do I even want a PS5 in general from a PC gamer and I have, you know, a, a PC that's even better than a PS5 Pro by a good amount? The reason is because GTA 6, all right? Let's, be, just, let's just be completely honest, all right? GTA 6 is realistically the only reason I truly want one. Obviously, there's like other reasons I do kind of miss couch gaming because I've been PC gaming for a very long time. So I would like to have a console that I can just plug in and play on the couch or whatever in the living room or, or whatever. You know, I could do something like that. Um, whereas with a PC, I just, I don't really like that experience. I'd rather just play at my desk like I always do. And I think I'd primarily still play at my desk desk, but I do want to play sometimes on the couch. But the point is still, it's GTA 6, okay? GTA 6 is only going to be on the Xbox Series X S and the PS5, and that's really it. That's all it's going to be on for a while. Obviously, it will come to PC, but it'll probably be at least a one year. That is what happens with Rockstar Games. It's unfortunate, and then you have to double dip. It's all greed at the end of the day. I highly doubt that they're just incapable of making a PC port day one. That's what I remember. I saw some ex-Rockstar developers saying that that's why they do it, so that they can make the PC port better. And yeah, I'm sure that's a part of it. But if they really wanted to, it's Rockstar. It's the most expensive game that has ever been produced ever, as far as I'm aware. Uh, yeah, I think that they could make a PC version day one if they really wanted to, but they know they'll make a lot more money off of morons like me who are impatient. But anyways, moving on, let's look at the reasons why the PS5 Pro is an absolute scam. I take it back. It's not just not worth the $700. It's a scam, okay? Because for this price, first of all, I, I know that this is obviously an option, even though it's not an option everyone wants. You would just be better off getting a PC. I I'm going to be completely real. Or put a little bit more money into that and then just get a PC that would be better than a PS5 Pro. I mean, here's the thing, though, with this, all right? I know that not everyone wants a PC, but with a console, this is the biggest reason here. It's not like it's a one and done. You spend $700. That's it, right? That's it. Okay. Maybe that's not that bad. You have to pay $80 a year on top of the $700. That right there is a scam. I cannot believe that in 2024, people still pay for this crap. As a PC gamer, it is just the biggest reason why I moved over, all right? Obviously, it's just, you know, because during the PS4 generation, every game was 30 FPS and stuff like that. And, you know, playing 60 plus FPS is fantastic. We're not going to get into all that stuff. I'm not saying consoles suck or anything like that in this video, by the way. I'm just saying there's certain aspects to them that are still ridiculous. And I cannot believe that, uh, yeah, I just paying for PS Plus, just the principle of it is ridiculous. First of all, they increased the price. It was 60 bucks when it first started being a thing with the PS4, which, by the way, if you weren't around for the PS3, playing online was free. Yeah, crazy concept. But then Xbox started doing that in the 360 era with Xbox Live Gold. And they realized people can get away with it. Now they got nowhere else to go if they want to stick with console gaming. I still would just switch to PC regardless, but that's just me. But anyways, point is, it's now $80. They just keep pushing that price up. And I'm sure, I am absolutely positive they will do that again. It'll probably go to 90 within the next five years, maybe even 100 eventually. They'll keep pushing it up little by little. And anybody who says inflation, inflation for what? 
what do you get from PS Plus? You get the privilege to play the games that you already paid $70 for. So anyways, I'm not going to go too in-depth with that. This video will be way too long, but that's just one of the biggest reasons I have an issue with this being $700. A console should not be that expensive when they're also asking for recurring subscriptions. Like, even with a base PS5 or an Xbox Series X, you can still make the argument that it's still cheaper to put that money, even with the subscription or whatever, 60 to 80 dollars a year or whatever you could still make the argument maybe that uh you know it would take a while to get to the point where maybe you would have been better off buying a pc for like a thousand dollars or whatever you know that's a few years worth of playing so maybe then you have the argument or maybe if you don't play online okay well then maybe that's not a problem for you but a lot of people do and uh, that would be me included any call of duty game for an example that's a big game regardless if you like it or not that's a massive game actually you got to pay online GTA 6, when that has an online feature, when that comes out, you're going to have to pay for online. Any game that costs money, which is funny, it's like you buy the game, yet you have to pay money. But if it's a free-to-play game, you don't have to pay for online. Like, it's so backwards, but regardless, I'm not complaining that the free-to-play games are... Like, they don't have to pay. Like, it, you shouldn't have to pay for any of the games, is my point. Real quick, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe for more videos like this. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, back to the video. But anyways, the next point with all of this is consoles are supposed to drop in price over time, not stay the same, and then they increase the price. That's what's been happening. They had a console, they had a PS5, the digital edition, that was actually better than the slim version that they dropped in terms of how much it probably costs them to produce, because uh, now this one's like a lot more plasticky. And so, I mean, I haven't seen them in person or anything, but that's just what I've heard. The original PS5 looked a lot better and felt a lot better when you were like, in terms of material and everything. But anyways, there was a digital version for $399. Now the digital version, even though it has to have the option of having a disk drive and it's made of cheaper material, it's actually $450 now. Like they increased the price. I know to an extent the inflation and all that crap in the, you know, in the economy right now. I'm not going to get into all that, but that only matters to an extent. Most of this is just down to a lack of competition when it comes to Xbox. Xbox clearly does not care. They've accepted their defeat. And that's not something that we actually want, all right? As a, regardless of whichever stupid side you think you're on, for whatever reason you want to have a side between console wars, there should be no sides in reality. In reality, you should want both sides to succeed in their own ways. That way, both sides have to keep competing with each other, and that way we get better games, we get better hardware. That's just how it should be, okay? Like, even as a PC gamer, the reason I haven't bought one is because there's no games for me to buy. And I'm not even saying, like, exclusives should exist, but that's another reason, though, all right? You know, going off the rails here because this video is very disorganized. You know, I apologize, but whatever. That's just how I do these videos. But that's another reason. There's not really any games right now. The fact that they showed The Last of Us Part 2 as an example clip for the PS5 Pro is absolutely laughable. That is a game that dropped on the PS4. It runs on my PS4 Pro at 1440p 30fps. Sure, 30fps sucks, but you can run that at 1440p at 60fps on a PS5 already. Do you really need 4K on a TV screen? That's another thing, all right? This, these are all these points that I've, I've thought of, man. You don't need 4K, even on a 4K screen, as long as it upscales to 4K. If you're sitting a certain distance away, you're not going to be able to tell each individual pixels. 4K on a monitor makes more sense. You can actually see it because you're sitting a lot closer to the display. With a TV, 1440p is more than enough pixels for you to not be able to tell the difference if you sit a certain distance away. Unless you're like sitting up against the screen like a psychopath, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between 1440p and 4K for the most part. All these little details that they're showing side-by-side -side comparisons for just don't matter as much. You're not going to be able to notice them. Even myself, like, I can tell the difference between these two side by side. I see all these videos and stuff of people saying they can't tell the difference. I mean, honestly, that's good. I mean, you can't tell the difference. That means that the PS5 Pro is definitely not for you. You can say, safely say that it would not benefit you to have this in your life, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so you're not missing out on anything, is my point. I can tell the difference, but realistically, would I tell the difference if they were not side by side? Probably not. I, I, it's only because they're side by side and they're pointing out, oh, look at this. Look at these two different images that are, by the way, zoomed in. That's another thing. When they're zoomed in, of course you're going to be able to see that because it's like you're having a lower resolution image when you zoom it in. So it's like, it's just the dumbest thing ever. If you zoom it out, you won't tell the difference between these two images at all whatsoever. So it's just, it's a joke. And then I see all these people defending it, man. They're defending it by showing, like, the previous prices of different PlayStation consoles with inflation included. And then they specifically, let's look at the PS3. That is the worst offender by far, because it was 
I don't know how much. It was like about 700 if you include inflation. But even then, okay, even then, you just can't compare the two. It's disingenuous. Because for one, it comes with a disk drive, a Blu-ray player, okay? Right off the bat, the PS3 came out during the same year that Blu-ray came out, all right? So if you wanted a Blu-ray player, you had to spend about $1,000. That was like, I, I looked it up recently. I, this could be wrong, but from what I briefly looked at with my research, it's about $1,000 back in 2006 for a Blu-ray player. For something that only plays movies or TV shows off of a disc, that's it, $1,000. When you could buy a PS3 for about $600, and uh, at the time $600, and we're, I guess the $1,000 was not including inflation, so it was $1,000 in 2006, which is kind of crazy to think about. But anyways, $600 in 2006, you could buy a Blu-ray player that could also play games if you really wanted to. So there's different reasons to get that, whereas a PS5 Pro, what benefit does this have to anyone who doesn't just want to have games play games a little bit better? That's it. It's, it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, moving past this, because like I said, I really don't want this video to be absolutely insanely long. There's no CPU upgrade. And that is the biggest issue with this. And the PS4 Pro had the exact same problem. That is why so many games were only 30 FPS. Now, some might say that's fine because it's just a mid-gen upgrade, which, uh, by the way, that's another one of my points that we'll get it to <laughs> for the end of this video. So honestly, yeah, sure, fine. It is fine to say it didn't have a CPU upgrade because it's, uh, it's a mid-gen refresh or whatever. But anyone who thinks that this is going to get 60 FPS on, on the PS5 Pro while the PS5 is getting 30 FPS or something max, that's never going to happen, okay? This is the way it works. Because they have the same CPU, which from what I've looked into is about the equivalent of a Ryzen 5 3600 in terms of gaming performance. That is about the power level of that, which by the way is absolutely not as powerful, anywhere near as powerful as the CPUs we can get nowadays. But anyways, I'm not gonna get into that. But point is, a 3600 is not going to be running the game that much. Or rather, if the game is running at 30 FPS max on a PS5 base, it is not gonna be running anywhere near 60 FPS on a PS5 Pro. It's gonna be also capped at 30 because they run the same CPU. I know it's a little bit overclocked or, or whatever they did to it, but judging it based off the PS4 Pro, it's gonna be the exact same thing. It's a CPU problem, not a GPU problem. All it's gonna do, even if they do have some sort of PS5 Pro patch for GTA 6, for an example, this could go for any game that only has 30 FPS, by the way, but GTA 6 in particular, because it's a very big open world game that they're probably gonna be pushing these consoles to their limits. The only thing that this PS5 Pro upgrade would do is it would allow you to play it like 4K with a couple improved graphics settings or, or something, just something that the GPU would do. Um, I don't think it would make that massive of an improvement. I really do not think so. But you know what it will do? It'll be a massive improvement to your wallet because this is a mid-generation upgrade for more money than any console has ever existed. Like, if this was a brand new console, maybe it would... I mean, I still don't think that would be right. I think it, a max of, like... 550 600 at the absolute most i would say even lower i'd say you know 500 like they've done is the absolute most for a brand new generation console how the ps4 to ps5 did that's a big upgrade regardless of what people think that is a big upgrade that ssd alone is a massive upgrade right so you go from that from the ps4 to the ps5 that would make sense to make it 700 well it doesn't because it's a console at the end of the day you don't the thing that i have such a problem with is this is sony wanting their cake and to eat it too you know that's saying yeah that's exactly what they're trying to do they want to sell a console at full price that they can make profit off of while also selling subscriptions and microtransactions and all sorts of things that they can make a lot of money off of especially nowadays with microtransactions that's another thing microtransactions are so much more popular than they've ever been before so it's crazy that we're in a generation where game consoles don't drop in price microtransactions are through the goddamn roof subscription costs to pay your games that are now 70 dollars instead of 60 by the way everything's going up but that doesn't make any sense you just can't keep doing that you can't just keep pushing 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 i'll tell you why it's doing that well not only just the stupid inflation stuff going on but also the fact that well i mean just xbox is in the bed when it comes to that if we're being completely real they need to do some stuff with that man i don't know what they're gonna do i know they well they tried just buying call of duty I'm not sure that'll work exactly since there's no like, they, they can't make anything exclusive with that. They've already signed a deal as far as I'm aware where they can't make anything exclusive. And I don't think that they should. That's not a, that's not me saying they should. I don't like exclusives, but they gotta give people more reason to buy these consoles because right now PlayStation is just gonna keep ramping up and it's going to absolutely 
just destroy the gaming industry. <laughs> I mean, it's already been happening. But yeah, at this point, what I think I've decided, I could change my mind, but so far what I'm going to probably do is wait for the Xbox Series X to go on sale and get one of those. I, I can wait. GTA 6 isn't going to be out for a, a while still, you know, still at least one year, at least, if, you know, assuming it doesn't get delayed. Let's hope, you know, knock on wood that that doesn't happen, but I can wait for a sale or something for the Xbox Series X. I was, the reason I haven't, I haven't gotten one of those before, I know they've gone on sale for like 350 some crazy cheap prices for, for what it is, you know, that's pretty cheap. Um, the reason I haven't gotten one at all yet is just because I've been waiting for the PS5 Pro just for it to be an absolute overpriced disappointment. The fact that it says vertical stand sold separately and there's no disc driver, it's like, are you absolutely like how greedy are you man i hope this doesn't sell well but let's be completely real it will sell well because people they love to eat shit i don't know why they just gobble it up and yeah that's really <laughs> that's really it man they just eat it and they enjoy it and they they take it man anyways we're <laughs> i don't understand it why do you like just accepting slop like, that's really what it is. I'm not saying the console's bad, but it's sure sh not worth $700. I, it's just the principle at the end of the day, because if you keep allowing them to increase the price over and over with all of these things, it's just going to be worse and worse. The PS6, for example, will probably not even come with a goddamn HDMI cord or a power cord. It'll probably be $1,000, and then they'll increase the PS Plus price to up to $100 a year. It's just going to get worse and worse if you let them do that, and people are letting them. It's the same thing with Call of Duty and people buying Black Cell bundles. They're sitting there complaining about the matchmaking system being egregious and just you know constantly manipulating you, uh, giving horrible lobbies and stuff like that, and yet they sit there still buying bundles and Black Cell battles passes for $30 every season it's just like damn stick with your principles or just don't say anything at all I, I don't understand but anyways this video is way too long as it is but yeah that's gonna wrap up this video what do you guys think about this do you think the ps5 pro is overpriced do you think they should drop it or do you think uh, you're just gonna skip this one because of the price let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below i'd love to hear what you guys have to say and if you guys enjoyed this video a like would be greatly appreciated if you do hear any like videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and yeah thank you guys so much for watching have a great day